Okay, today we're going to talk about uh, liver function tests. These are tests done um, that show us whether or not our hepatitis B is having an effect on our health, any effect on our liver. They are the best indication that our hep B may need medication or that our hep B is fast asleep, having no effect. And I'm in that group that will live a long, healthy life and uh, never progress to any problems with my head B. So let's get on and learn all about liver function blood tests. Now, the liver function tests teach us that we're healthy. There's this term often used, healthy carrier. It means someone who has head B that is not having an effect on them. Uh, the liver function tests also show us how much uh, if the hep B is uh, affecting the liver or harming the liver. The liver function tests show up any toxins, whether we're using things that harm our liver. The liver function tests show up gallstones. They also show up levels of liver damage. Um, and we have to remember the liver can have 75% damage and you can still live to 100. It's a very powerful organ and it can regenerate. It can get itself healed. It can get better. Um, the liver function tests also show up um, other illnesses. Uh, uh, and very often patients have changes to their liver functions and they don't realize that's not hair B. That's something else. Uh, and all through our life, our liver function tests go up and down. Um, it also shows if we have fat in the liver. And the most important thing about liver function blood tests, they are yours to control. You don't just watch them, you decide them. Um, many, many times you can choose them. Right, so what are these enzymes and liver tests? The first and most important ones are ALT and AST. Those two show the liver damage and the liver inflammation. And those are the most important ones that we always need to look at. We've also got ALPs, we've also got GGTs. Um, and those are the four we're going to study today. So there are some stupid terms with the um, tests. You know, sometimes they say SGPT instead of saying ALT, um, just to confuse you. Um, serum glutamic pyruvic transaminase. You know, don't learn all this stuff. Just learn my out, my ast, my marker for liver inflammation. If my liver's working hard. Similarly, S got ast. And it's called ast. Call it ast. It shows if the liver is again inflamed, working hard, and sometimes it's a sign of liver damage. Again, don't panic. If there's a little liver damage, we'll make it right. There's also stupid numbers. Sometimes they measure from 0 to 12 as a healthy range. And sometimes they measure from 0 to 44. Sometimes they measure from 0 to 50. Always look at your reference range. And also there's these symbols. This one means greater than. And this one means less than. So sometimes it, you should be greater than a certain number, or sometimes you should be less than a certain number, moving on. Right, out, let's kick off with out. First thing about out, look at it like this, your heart goes up and down all day long. It beats faster if you run, beats slower if you sleep. It's supposed to go up and down. Do not panic if every time your ALT score is different. It's supposed to be different. It goes up and down with every meal. It goes up and down with every sleep. It goes up and down with every infection, cold and flu. It's okay to go up and down. Now, uh, 0 to 50 is a normal range. But it can become what we call permanently a bit elevated. And that's a bit more of a problem. If you're always on alcohol, it'll always be up to about 100, 150, 200. If you're always on paracetamol for pain, it may go up to 200, 400. If you're always on sodium barbitol or certain harsh 
medical drug regimes, again, it can go up. You will see the alt noticing that. The liver is processing this toxin out of the body. So you will see it going up. It tends to stay at about 70 if you're overweight, uh, living on fast food, you can go up to 100, 200. Um, it also goes up if your viral level is 10 million, 100 million, a billion. The liver may often be a little strained dealing with that. Again, the same is true of AST. It will go up and down all your life, and it's supposed to. Um, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong. You breathe in and out. You breathe in and out fast when you run. That's very healthy. Um, so don't be fooled by the fact that these things change. Now, this measures liver inflammation as well. There's a liver damage. Um, it goes up and down with all the same reasons, alcohol abuse, paracetamol abuse, whereas the out will go up, you know, if you have paracetamol for a week, the out will go up. If you have paracetamol for five years, the ast may well get damaged and stay up. So there is a slight difference. Um, again, all the same reasons and also other infections, but the difference with ast is it can sometimes indicate little levels of liver damage, which is stage four fibrosis, things like that. So, um, zero to 50 is your normal out, and anything under 50, that's fantastic. I'm constantly dealing with uh, patients who say, oh, my out was 20, and now it's 44. I think I'm dying. Oh, woe is me. Don't fall for that. Under 50, fantastic, be happy. 50 to 70 outs constantly is often a sign of a fatty liver rather than hepatitis. So that's something to just watch out for. You know, always if your out is up, take away the things that might raise it. And the first thing is, am I overweight? Am I living on oily fried foods, things that hurt my liver. 80 to 130, if you're an alcoholic, if you're drinking every day, you may well start to see this level. Um, liver damage or serious alcoholism, 200 to 300. This is a sign that the liver's really quite tired. If you've got that level constantly, uh, we are concerned that, that, that your liver has been harmed. 300 to 400, um, I have found people with hep B who live on junk food, and they, funnily enough, have levels of 300, 400. I've also found people um, living on protein powder um, uh, or, or daily paracetamol for years. Um, 300 to 400 out. Again, it doesn't mean the liver's destroyed, it just means you're poisoning it and it's working incredibly hard with all these toxins. Uh, from 1000 to 2500 is a common sign with acute hep B. Um, and sometimes typhoids, malaria, it's you know, extreme infections. The liver's fighting very, very hard to clear. Um, and again, it's supposed to go up to 2,000 if you have acute hep B. It's a sign that your liver is mobilizing all the soldiers to deal with something. That's what ALF is. The liver expands it. It eats things. It's processing things that it doesn't really want in the body. AST, slightly lower. The normal range is 0 to 44. And again, everything under 44 is perfectly healthy. Do not panic if your ass was 20 and then it's 40. Fantastic, no problem, don't worry. Um, if the ass is between 50 and 100, we look at sort of liver abuse. Is, is the person taking toxins? Is, is, is there some other illness? Is the person morbidly obese? Is there abuse of the liver? Too much food, too much alcohol, too many drugs, what's going on? Um, if it's 100 to 200, there is more of a chance that this is liver damage 
from hepatitis. Um, that's a figure where we we would immediately be concerned that the, the hepatitis is damaging the liver a lot. Even between 50 and 100, this can be a sign of a very high viral load or hepatitis-driven liver damage. But we have to understand that all these things affect the liver. And we need to check and avoid all the liver problems uh, and liver toxins before we blame hepatitis B for causing these raised levels. Okay, and then with acute head B, 200 to 500. Moving on, the other two uh, enzymes that we want to talk about uh, are ALPS, alkaline phosphatase. Uh, now, ALPS should be between, be between 50 and 140, and these are very much indicators of gallstones and gall bile duct uh, and gall bladder areas of the liver. If we find that the alkaline phosphatase has gone up to high levels, 200, 250, we immediately start thinking, is there gallstones or some sort of bile duct issues at work? Lots of cholesterol is often a prime cause of this. Um, and fast food, sugary foods, all hit the gallbladder, especially after sort of 40, 50, 60. A lot of patients get gall issues. And the final enzyme today is the GGTs. And we in the business, 11 to 50, this is your alcohol marker or your drugs marker. People abusing alcohol, uh, even, you know, go out, drink all night, come home, test your GGTs, they will be high. We can always tell. Uh, a lot of toxicology tests in um, companies look at GGT as well as alcohol in the bloodstream. Yeah, and so those are your basic four liver enzymes that we're talking about today. And just to skim through a few examples, here you see Alton S, 28, 26, perfectly healthy person. Billy Rubin, it's only a touch up. It's all right, it's six over, but that could be a lot of rich eating or something like that. Basically, the Alton Ass tell us this person's fine. Again, Alt 56, Escot 33. Well, there's no signs of liver harm. The Escot's good, the Alt is good, the Ast is good. But we look at the Alt and we think, oh, is the person overweight? You can see that. This one, you can see the GGTs they're double what they should be, this person's been drinking. And because they've been drinking, um, we're looking at high alt and ast. We're also looking at possible gallstones as well as an alcohol problem there. Um, here you see an acute case. In four days, from the 27th of July to the 31st of July, the person's gone from 390 alts down to 205 alts. Gives you an idea of the loop that happens with acute hep B. This is what looks like the hep B virus doing things. The alt and the ast are both a little up. When we see that, we watch it for uh, maybe six months, two years, a year, and think about antivirals. Um, this particular person, again, we're just looking at the alt is up. We start thinking, are they overweight? And they were. And that was the problem, diet and weight. And this one is a fine one. Look, 12 and 23, perfectly, perfectly healthy, going to live forever. And again, uh, ALT 18, AST 19, fine, going to live forever. So the bottom line with ALTs and ASTs is we control them, we must know them, and we can live a long time when we understand them. Thanks for watching.